Hello everyone, my name is Alex Hamer and today we'll be continuing our series on making Cloudscapes with the new Skybox node in Houdini 20. If you've seen some images of Cirrus clouds, you can clearly see that compared to other common types of clouds, they don't really have a particular shape and tend to be more of a flat layer of feathery and wispy clouds. So creating these specific initial shapes for these Cirrus clouds will be fairly challenging with the modeling uh, generation tools. Um, due to its unconventional shape, which is more of a flat plane. I'm instead choosing to use the Skybox node, which will help me to create an entire Skybox procedurally. Before we get started, it's important to note that you may need to change some viewport settings around to increase the quality of the clouds within the viewport when we are working at such large scales. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, you can skip ahead past this part. So let me do that now. You can see here that I just have a simple test cloudscape to illustrate how to do this. Firstly, let's head over to our display options, or you can hover over the viewport and press D, then navigate to the texture category and set the limit resolution to 512 by 512 by 512. Alternatively, you can disable limiting this. If this is very expensive on your machine, you can set this to a lower resolution, but know that volumes will appear much more voxelized within Houdini. Of course, this won't matter as much once it's imported to a program like Unreal, this is only affecting how it will render in the Houdini viewport. Now let's get into setting up our skybox. If I first drag in a piece of test geometry, which is a lower resolution model of the Project Pegasus landscape, and add a basic skylight setup, things will be a lot easier to work with, as we can base the scale of things such as noises and such by comparing it to the landscape, which is about 4 by 4 kilometers. You can also overshoot this slightly if you wanted. Next if I create a skybox node, you can see that we have a lot of initial options here. To repeat the basics from the other videos, the voxel size is the size of each voxel within the simulation. This value is likely one you'll play around with a lot, as halving this value will require 8 times the memory and time to calculate. While we're doing the basic setup, we can just set this voxel size to be about 15, to keep things relatively low resolution, so we can make some quick bulk changes and see results faster, before we mess with the in-depth noises and details. This, unlike the texture resolution in our display settings, will affect the voxelization quality of the final result when it's exported. You can think of this as the resolution of our volume. Next, let's set up the bounds for our skybox. For the sake of the tutorial, I just want to cover the entire landscape. So let's scroll to sky setup and set the size and center of the bounding box to be covering our landscape. You can input a bounding box using the third input node, but it's just as easy to set it up within the skybox node itself. Let's then set our altitude and thickness, which set the minimum altitude for the bottom cloud and the vertical extent of the cloud layer respectively. These are automatically set unless you disable this checkbox. Large billowy clouds may require a larger thickness, while smaller wispy clouds may only require a thin layer. You can adjust these values to your needs. So for cirrus clouds, we'll only need a thin layer, which will be about 275 altitude, and I can have it be about 700 thickness, which is a bit of an overkill for a thin layer, but while I'm doing the setup, I can be less strict with this control. So now, as you can see, we have a very thick, messy layer. So I want to mess around with the coverage, anvil, and precipitation controls to adjust how this looks. So I can actually keep the coverage about the same. Actually, I'll, I'll increase it very slightly. The coverage is essentially how much of the sky is covered by the clouds. So one would be the entire sky and zero would be no clouds, basically. If we hover over this, we can see a more detailed description. So lower values will create smaller cloud patches with less density, separated by larger spaces, while large values will create some continuous dense volume. I can leave precipitation, which is just additional control over how much of the sky is covered by the clouds. I can then adjust the anvil slightly by increasing it, which changes how much the cloud spreads out at the top. Note that these values are very sensitive and small changes have a massive impact on the final result. Okay, we're now ready to mess around with the noises. Firstly, heading into billowy noise, I can increase my element size slightly to about 425. Um, this is all I need from this one. With alligator noise, we also don't need to touch this one. I'm choosing to ignore it because I want to utilize wispy noise to do the majority of the work with this one. So, heading into wispy noise, I can enable it and set the amplitude to be very high at about 1600. I can then also edit the amplitude scale, which edits how much of the amplitude is applied in each specific direction. And I can edit this by clicking the XYZ button 
next to the amplitude control. With this, I want to be able to create that wispy channel effect. So I want to apply this noise in one direction so I can just choose the X direction. So if I set the X to be one and the others to be zero, you can see that it starts to be applied towards one direction. I can also decrease the element size scale to about 0.684. I found this one to be the sweet spot, but you can adjust this around. And again, this control also drastically changes the output. I also turned on turbulence to add some more variation. I didn't edit the finer controls with it. However, you might find that this works more for you to edit around with that. So at this point, our clouds look pretty strange. They don't really look wispy at all. So I did edit warping. However, I'm gonna skip that one and come back to it and go straight into masking. So what I want to do here is set the mask center to one. And what this does is it masks the wispy noise based on the density of the billowy noise using a threshold range. So by setting it to one, the mask will fill the entire cloudscape with wispy noise. Next, heading back to warping, I actually want to set the distortion to about one to really distort and stir up the noise. And all of this results in channels of wispy stirred cloud wispy noise uh, in a flat layer. However, I do notice that at the bottom, we are getting it cut off slightly. So if I head back to sky setup, if you remember I mentioned earlier that I was being a bit lenient with the thickness setting, I can actually tune this down slightly and this will create things more compressed into a flatter layer. So I just set my thickness to be about 600 and I had to also increase my altitude slightly again uh, to have things within the bounds. Now let's cover the final options. I don't need to worry about animation as I'm not doing an animated skybox, but the output tab seems to have some interesting controls for us. Let's say that you found this setup to be too dense or you wanted to reduce the density of an overall layer. Within output, you can limit the maximum density and also adjust the scale at which the billowy noise and wispy noise functions apply density changes. Essentially, these controls are multipliers for the density in areas where billowy noise and wispy noise functions are generated. So now if I set my voxel size to be low, let's say about five or six, and let it load, we can see our skybox in a very high quality fashion. It looks like the result we want. So if you want to export this as a VDB, it's a fairly simple process. I'll switch back to my task cloudscape from earlier, but know that this process is completely identical for any other skybox or VDB volume within Houdini. We simply drag out from the skybox node and create a node called convert VDB. Then within this node, we want to change a few settings around. We want to change convert from, from volume to VDB. This will change our Houdini volume into a VDB format, which can be used by external programs that support it. Then, just to make things simpler, I don't want to export any fancy stuff, just the density. So I'll change my VDB type to float and set the precision to 32-bit. I also don't need to print the tolerance. These settings can be changed for your needs and there is documentation online for how to use this node in a more fine controlled way. Next, let's create a file cache node. This is what we'll use to export the clouds out of Houdini. Again, we don't need to tweak anything major as there's a lot of complicated options just some small aspects. Firstly, I'd like to enable load from disk at the top. This means that when we hit render, if we already have the skybox or volume rendered with the blue tag in our scene, it will use what it has from that instead of recalculating the whole tree of nodes again when we click the button. So this just saves you a bit of time if you're exporting lots of variations. We also don't need a sequence, so we can change the evaluation from frame range to single frame. Finally, we just need to set a name and select a folder. It's also important that the file type has changed here, so you must select VDB. And that's how you export VDBs from Houdini. I hope you enjoyed watching this video on how to create a cloudscape using the new Skybox node in Houdini 20. Feel free to check out some of the other videos within the series where I explore how to create other distinct cloud types with the Skybox node, or showing off all of the new tools and capabilities to do with clouds in Houdini 20. Again, this project file will be available to download in the Project Pegasus page, and you can also find some amazing work to do with Houdini digital assets and procedural generation on the Project Pegasus page on the SideFX website. Thank you for watching.